Hey everyone, EDC back again, so this is going to be a different video than usual. Normally I like dissecting, reviewing, or analyzing a whole game. I don't really make videos solely about easter eggs or by any chance lore. Usually they are a one-off thing if I do. But, like some nights I have, I look up at the ceiling in my bed and wonder about some of the most important questions about life that will make your head spin. Like, why are we here? Who really shot JFK? What is the meaning of life? How many McNuggets can I eat before yeah. getting diabetes? Yes! One question I asked myself was, how is Portal and Half-Life connected? Now, I respect both of these franchises. Cough, cough, Half-Life's better, cough, cough. Though I've always found it a bit peculiar how Portal and Half-Life share the same universe. Like, this scene from Portal 2... Alright, going on 3 just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's, uh, go on 1 this time. Okay, ready? 1. Catch me, catch me! Ow! Ow! ...is supposed to be in the same universe... ...as this. Close your eyes, honey! I love you, Dad! No! Oh my god! Punchy, punchy. Okay, granted, those scenes from Portal 2 are actually pretty funny, but you get my point. No one has really done a video on this, so I thought it would be a good idea to capitalize, I mean, to make a video on it. Hey ADC, you forgot to mention my video. Anyways, now that I have your attention, you need to watch my video now. Well, not right now, but watch it later, or the Gmail will come to your house at 3 a.m. But basically, in my part of this awesome collab, I discuss which fictional establishment in the Half-Life and Portal universe is the overall better workplace. Oh yeah, I forgot about how Mauricio Hara is doing a video that is Half-Life and Portal related also. It's about which facility would be the best place to work at, Black Mesa or Aperture Science. I mean, why wouldn't you want to check out Mauricio Hara's channel? He looks like he belongs on Time Magazine! With that aside, let's focus on the references between these franchises. Obviously, we know Portal and Half-Life are in the same timeline. That doesn't really need to be debunked. But, I want to actually see the references in these games and how they acknowledge each other. So for our starting point, we will need to skip through all of these games and over the Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Episode 2 is the first game that actually brings up Aperture Science. Although being a mystery in Half-Life 2 Episode 1 about what Judas' message was, it is revealed to us in Episode 2. The Borealis. We're going to Borealis. The Borealis was a ship that seemingly disappeared for no reason, and would have been a new plot point for what would have been Half-Life 2 Episode 3. But, that never happened. Thanks, Valve. Aperture Science blueprints of the Borealis can actually be seen on the monitor and in the game files, as well as even the Aperture Laboratory's logo being present, not just on the blueprints, but actually on the ship itself. Heck, for some reason, Gladys' name was on these blueprints, which I think was retcon though. Now, what's actually on the blueprints themselves is interesting. On board the vessel, there are unstationary scaffolds and emancipation grids. I can see emancipation grids, but unstationary scaffolds? I don't know how that would work on a ship. But knowing Valve, they may forget about this in future titles. Eli argues about the destruction of the ship, while Kleiner mm. thinks the Borealis should be used against the Combine. Some of the best writing in the Half-Life series, in my opinion. This is the only time in the Half-Life series where they even mention the Portal universe or its existence. Jeez, it's like as if Valve came up with Aperture Science in 2007 with the release of the Orange Box since it was just now being mentioned here and now. God. But I would say there is pretty good evidence here. Heck, Kleiner gives us an explanation and everything. What? The Borealis? It's real? Oh yes, quite real, despite its almost legendary stature. Our peers at Aperture Science were at work on a project of some promise, but in their rush to beat Black Mesa for funding, they must have compromised ordinary standards of risk. We heard their research vessel had simply disappeared, vanished with all hands, and even part of the dry dock. Few believed the Borealis would ever be seen again. Since there is a huge gap in time for Half-Life since Valve stopped caring, there are no other portal references from the Half-Life perspective, though I will get to Alex when I do. For now, let's look at Portal 1 and how it connects with Half-Life. So, um, when was the last time I played Portal 1 again? Oh, June 29th, 2018. That was kind of a while ago, wasn't it? Before I get to anything else, let's go over some development history, because why not? Portal 1 originally was going for a Nova Prospect vibe from Half-Life 2, so Portal I guess was always meant to be in the same universe from the start. 
After a while, it got to where it is today and has more of an identity than just being a side story in the Half-Life universe. An interesting tidbit on development of Portal was that Mark Laylaw, the lead writer of Half-Life, wasn't actually on board with connecting both universes, recently stating, All we could do is try to incorporate them somehow. I felt like doing this made both universes smaller, but from a franchise branding perspective, that's a good thing. I eventually did come up with a scenario in which we could connect Aperture and Black Mesa, and we had Borealis lying around from the early days of Half-Life 2, so I thought maybe we could end up with some cool lore and backstory in the long run. The portal gun even bears some resemblance to the gravity gun in some areas. The Combine Assassin's boots in the Half-Life 2 beta were reused for Portal as the Longfall boots and the Advanced Knee replacement. But I think we've talked enough about beta content! Now, let's talk about what is in retail. You know, stuff that was released and actually came out. For Portal 1, I can honestly believe it's in the same universe as Half-Life. I'm getting really tired of seeing and writing the word universe. Universe, universe, universe. But really, I can buy Portal 1 and Half-Life being together in the same universe. The dark oppressive atmosphere, the loneliness, and the pure white corridors, I love it! So for references, we see a couple of things. We can observe a PowerPoint presentation comparing and contrasting Black Mesa and Aperture Science in terms of success. The slideshow reveals both company results for their proposals for funding and how they compare. Aperture proposes triple the amount of ideas compared to that of Black Mesa, with Aperture basically gaining no funding and Black Mesa getting most of it instead. So sad. You can even find this PowerPoint at the ending of the game. On the GLaDOS monitor, there's a picture of the Black Mesa logo, along with other strange pictures. Since Portal 1 is supposed to take place somewhere around the 2010s, the Combine Invasion had already happened, and is hinted by Gladys about their presence. Are you trying to escape? <laughs> Things have changed since the last time you left the building. What's going on up there will make you wish you were back in here. I have an infinite capacity for knowledge, and even I'm not sure what's going on outside. All I know is I'm the only thing standing between us and them. What was? Which is strange, because Aperture uses combined energy balls for their testing. Oh, sorry, I mean the Aperture Science High Energy Pellet. Literally, it is the same thing. Nothing is different about it other than how it can kill the player instantly. I think this is probably just Valve reusing assets from the Source Engine. They probably didn't think too much about it. There are some other things that fans have picked up on in Portal 1. There is the acronym ASHPD, and on the Aperture Science keyboard, the yellow keys spell out ASD. E R H N I P. Due to these two things looking oddly familiar, it got some fans to speculate. Dude, it's Shepard! Sorry to bust everyone's bubble, but Kim Swift and Doug Lombardi both confirmed that it was a huge coincidence that ASHPD actually means Aperture Science Handheld Portal Device. Motherfucker! An interesting fact is that this confusion started before Portal was even released. People took Aperture Science handheld portal device and put them together as far back as 2006. Then Valve called these keys to make fun of the rumor. In retrospect, it might have caused more confusion among players. I mean, I still remember going on the internet and watching videos trying to debunk this end screen. Bro, it's Shepard! You see the keyboard? You fuck that much me! It's Corporal Shepard, dude! I can't really say I blame the fans. In opposing force, you do get the Displacer Cannon, and it does look like it resembles the name Adrian Shepard. What a giant misunderstanding. I tried looking into the development commentary of Portal to see if there was anything I could work with. There were some mentions of Half-Life, but these were mainly mentions for gameplay. Only one worth noting was from Eric Wolpot, the lead writer of Portal, and he had this to say. Even though Portal tells a simple story, we created a lot of backstory. For Aperture Science, for its employees, for its rivalry with the hated Black Mesa, and for where all of this fits into the cosmology of Half-Life. This first Portal game doesn't reveal all of it, but we crammed a lot of little details into the environments. This area, for instance, called the Ratman Den, hints that there may be other people trapped in the facility. Besides this obvious Black Mesa reference, both the name and logo being mentioned in the Still Alive song, That is pretty much it for Portal 1. Because I'm a potato. Oh good. My slow clap processor made it into this thing. So we have that. 
For the next game, Portal 2 is what really makes me question how these games are related. Don't get me wrong, Portal 2 is awesome and has an amazing story, but it being in the same universe as Half-Life makes it feel out of place to me. Portal 2 feels like a Disney movie rather than the organic story of Half-Life or even to a degree of Portal 1. There are quite a bit of references and information that does try linking back to Half-Life in this game. Cave Johnson mentions Black Mesa only two times throughout Portal 2, shockingly enough. The first line being, Greetings friend, I'm Cave Johnson, CEO of Aperture Science. You might know us as a vital participant in the 1968 Senate hearings on missing astronauts. And you've most likely used one of the many products we invented, but that other people have somehow managed to steal from us. Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt- Sir, the testing? Right. Then there is this quote from the perpetual testing initiative DLC, which explores the idea of different dimensions and universes being tricked to make more test chambers for Aperture. In this quote, Aperture buys out Black Mesa, preventing the Half-Life storyline, and it's not just a one-off line, too. Cave Johnson, new owner and CEO of Black Mesa. That's right, you've been bought. First order of business, we're renaming you under the Aperture brand. I'm leaning towards Blaperture Mesa. Marketing boys think something else, so Blaperture it is. Next, they tell me you people are conducting some anomalous materials research that could result in a resonance cascade. So, I'm shutting that down before you idiots end the world. A resonance cascade? You're supposed to be scientists. Use some common sense. STOP! Which, I don't think is canon in the overall main storyline, but it's something that goes in great detail. Besides that, in Base Portal 2, we do get more lore on how Aperture Science became a company, and we do see a little bit more of that context behind the rivalry with Black Mesa. If you want to know more about this topic, then I'll point you in the direction of Mauricio Hara's video about it. It's not because of our collab, it's actually a pretty good video. The final reference is the infamous Borealis Easter Egg, where we can view the dry dock where the ship was from the 1970s era of Aperture. Sadly, there is very little evidence in Portal 2 besides these key moments. In the Portal 2 Alternate Reality Game, or ARG, we get some descriptions of the Borealis in an email sent to someone named CJ. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! The email from JH reads, We designed the entire thing to be very, very durable. It was easy to get the material since everyone's been thinking it's a simple icebreaker ship. <laughs> we have made sure to ship it up anything not necessary, so that we have plenty of space for it. It doesn't have any backup supplies in the event the crew runs out of food. And there isn't much food on board in the first place. In the event, you need to send it off all of a sudden. Use your ore box with the code HB1. That's all, CJ. Not much else I can tell you other than this won't leave a blight on our record. Mace is going to be sore when they see what we've done. This is a fascinating quote because it's the only thing from Valve that actually somewhat reveals what's on the Borealis. Can this change in future games? Maybe. Another interesting tidbit is that HB1 could be a reference to the hype of Boria from the Half-Life 2 beta. <gasps> BRO! BETA CONTENT IN PORTAL 2 CANON?! In the Portal 2 Lab Rack comic, we do see some Half-Life references on page 14. We see two first aid stations from the original Half-Life. An HEV charging station is present, which is odd because we don't see anything in Aperture that seems like it would need that type of power, or even an ATV lying around, on the surface anyways. Then there is a gravity gun over here, did Black Mesa already make one? Could Aperture have stolen these for research, or was it Black Mesa that stole them? We don't really know. Now these could just be easter eggs thrown in by Valve, just a little one-off thing that is in the background. WAIT IS THIS A FUCKING COMBINE HEALTH STATION?! Alright, so this is gonna be my lightning round of things to mention. In LEGO Dimensions, we get this forcefully subbed scene in the storage room with Black Mesa boxes everywhere at the ending. It kinda reminds me of that one armory room from the chapter Surface Tension in Half-Life 1, mainly in the Black Mesa remake and its design and structure. I don't know why this annoyed me, some kid who probably played this had no idea what this was. Then again, LEGO Dimensions isn't canon. At least I don't think so. But if it is, that means Batman exists in the Half-Life Universe! In Robot Repair, there's an ATV module in Atlas with the Black Mesa logo again being present. Another interesting little reference to Half-Life in the lab is in the hub area. This devious little Aperture Science themed stool was actually made at Black Mesa's private lumberyard. Wait, what? So, Black Mesa has its own private lumberyard of all things. Is this even canon? Probably not. It's not really important in the story unless Gordon Freeman decides to go there to fuck shit up in Half-Life 3. All I can say is that it exists. On Moondust, in Buggy Buddy, you can remote control two rovers, one of them being an after science themed one, with the other one being Black Mesa themed with, you guessed it, the Black Mesa logo. Same deal with the controllers as well. 
Mark Laylaw was working on a VR game about the Borealis before he left Valve, but this project was cancelled and we don't really know how it would have connected things. Only concepts like seeing the Seven Hour War and some events that happen after Episode 2, as well as ideas like fishing off of the Borealis and exploring the vessel. Mark Laylaw also released Epistol 3, a draft of Half-Life 2 Episode 3, which did touch on connections between Half-Life and Portal, so he now regrets doing this post. Alright, so now we're back to Half-Life itself. After a long wait for a new entry, actually a really long one, Half-Life Alex finally releases. So, let's take a look at it. In Half-Life Alex, when you first meet the Combine, you can find five Portal Turret graffitis on the map. This one being the first one that you see, and in my opinion, being the most noticeable. Another sighting is here by the doorway, and this one on the wall. You can even find two more in the other arena, and yes, this is my actual reaction to seeing this other graffiti. I didn't know there was more than one at the time. The final one is this really awkward stretch portal turret graffiti. I don't know why it's like that, but it is there. Another portal reference in Half-Life Alex is... Oh wait, that's it. The next game on our list is Aperture Desk Job. Wait a minute, what happens when you take Desk Job and Hand Lab and put them together? Although Desk Job is a tech demo made by Valve and is 30 minutes long, I still really enjoyed it. Oh, zip zap zap, that is how you inspect a toilet. I hope you were paying attention because I'm not saying any of that twice. Look, it's not rocket science. It's not even toilet science. Here's everything you need to know. See that light on the wall? If that light goes on, you're fired. <laughs> Oh wait, this game isn't even canon. Thanks, Eric Woolpaw. Then again, I think that's probably for the best. There really isn't anything to point out, other than how the ammo crates at the beginning seem to bear some resemblance to the one seen in Half-Life 2. Other than that, there really isn't much to discuss. I mean, we did find a crap ton of info on HL Citadel, HLX, Neon Prime, whatever the fuck Valve is working on nowadays. I don't know what line of code they changed in Source 2, so, um, I don't know, I guess that's kind of cool. It is a little bit odd how Valve made some of these models for a tech demo, and it does make you wonder if they'll reuse some of them in another project. I mean, these explosions were from Half-Life Alex, I know that. But that field is just speculation, and I am nowhere near close being an expert in analyzing it. I'll let other people do that job for me. Or just... wait on Valve time. So what did we learn today? I guess that these two series aren't really connected that well? I'm not really sure, actually. Although these game series don't really do much to connect each other, I still think they are both great in their own right. Half-Life is a mature FPS series, while Portal is a wholesome puzzle game. Well, for the most part. Fancy, fancy, no parents. As much as I would love to see consistency or more added to the lore, I mostly think it isn't too much needed. But then again, a lot of Portal fans that I talk to don't actually know that it's in the same universe as Half-Life, so... I don't know, I just fucking hate Portal's community. I wanted to give another special thanks to Mauricio Har for the collaboration on our Half-Portal event. You can go check him out in his video in the description, or possibly a pinned comment if I don't forget. Password. No. Elephant's gonna crack at the best YouTuber. Alright, you can come on in. But if you like this video, consider subscribing, liking, or commenting your thoughts down below. I even have a Twitter account, which I barely mention in these videos. I post stuff there. Anyways, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.